everyone, my name is Sarah and today I'm going to be walking you through a brief tutorial of how to navigate the web version of your FieldLens software. Today we're going to be covering how to select or create a new project, how to add people to that project, and how to create, view, and filter posts within that project. So as you can see here on my screen, this is where you will arrive when you first log in to your FieldLens web version software. Now from here, I can see a list of projects right here in the center and I can select from some of my top most recent projects or I can go ahead and view all of my existing projects if I'd like by clicking down at the bottom here. That's going to allow me to search for projects by name. I'll see my list of projects here, which is projects that I am already added to. And then there will be a list of projects that I can join, which allows me to see projects uh, for my company that I am allowed to join. Now from this list, uh, I can take some action on my existing projects. This more icon over here on the right hand side, these three vertical dots, open up some options for me. If I have the permissions, I can make a private project public. I can mute project notifications if I don't want to receive any notifications on that particular project. I can invite additional people to join the project or I can leave the project if I'm no longer working as a part of this project team. Another option would be to make group selections for my projects. I can select all uh, and then edit that down to a certain subset of my projects and choose to leave those projects if I would like. Now Assuming that I don't see the project that I'm looking for on either of my lists, I do have the opportunity to add a new project. Notice I can add it from here with the blue button, or on the main screen I do have this white new project button. Either way works, and I'm going to be able to create either a public or a private project. Public project means anyone in my company can join that project. Private means I would have to invite them as the project organizer in order for them to be able to see and access that project. So we're going to create a private project. I'm going to go ahead and name it. We can name it whatever we would like. And then we'll go ahead and indicate the country and the zip code for this project. And that's just going to allow us to pull weather information uh, from the project zip code. We also have this option down here, this checkbox to import data from another project. What that would allow me to do is pull over information like categories and locations from other projects within my field lens database. We're going to go ahead and create. Now we've created the project and we have a couple of additional steps here to add people to the project. So every time you create a brand new project, FieldLens will ask you who you'd like to add to the project. It's going to suggest people uh, from your company. You can also search for people by name. So we're going to go ahead and add Carrie here. And then we'll search uh, to see if we find anyone else we want to add. All right, we can add anyone that we'd like if we need to remove them. We've got the X over here. And then when we're ready, we can go ahead and hit next. This is going to offer us the opportunity to send them a welcome email. So you can see here the message they've been added to a field lens project uh, and we're inviting them to go ahead and view or join that project. Now assuming you were to add someone who's not a part of the project or who's not a part of field lens, excuse me, I can go ahead and add a new email here. Uh, so I could go ahead and add any email address that I want. And what that's going to do is allow me uh, to add them to the project and send an email address or send a, a welcome email to them. So we're just going to add these two people and send. That has sent them the invite that we saw and it's going to ask them to view the project. Now from here, we can navigate to several other places using our top menu bar here, this black bar that's going to be visible to us no matter where we are within Field Lens. So the first thing up here to note is that we have the ability to click on this projects menu. So if I would like to shift to a different project 
while I'm in field lens, right? This brings me back to that original list that we saw on the main page where I can go ahead and search through my projects or create a new project right from here. But for now, I can see that I'm within my Lily's Diner project. So I'm in the project on the people page, which is where I'm going to end up when I first finish creating the project. Notice from here, I can say I want to add people to this project. If I want to come back to that window uh, to select more people or add more email addresses and send a welcome email, you'll hit this third step if you're adding a new person. That's going to allow you uh, to go ahead and fill in the company that that new person works for and their profile information if needed. Whereas you saw when I added Carrie and Christina, they're already uh, set up with company and profile information. So we can add folks here. We also have some editing capability, right? Uh, if we have the correct permissions, we can edit uh, an individual's information. We can remove them for a pro from a project. And if we are an administrator or a project organizer for this project, we can make additional people project organizers. You can see that I am a project organizer based on this little green uh, star here. And that allows me to make others project organizers as well. So this is our people page. Where we're going to be going from here is our posts page. Notice you do also have a page for drawings and reports. Those are not going to be covered in this video. If you're looking for information on how to manage your drawings or your reports, we do have separate videos for each of those pages. So we're going to navigate over to our posts tab. This is where we can see all posts within the project. They'll be listed here. We can search through them with our search bar. We can filter through them with the status or the flag, which indicates the type of post. And you've got more filters to access here. We can also create a new post right up here on the right hand side. Now, the key thing to keep in mind about Field Lens is that each project is post driven. The majority of what's going on within a project uh, and the information and communication that's happening all happens via posts. So I'm going to go ahead and click new post and walk my way through the required fields to create a new post. So first my post needs to have a title. And in this case, I'm going to say that I need to ascertain the border wall dimensions, right? That's information that I need. I can go ahead and indicate who this post is to. And that allows me to dictate who's going to be able to see and access this post. So I can add individuals or companies. And if I'd like, I can hit browse, right? I can simply enter a name, email or company, or I can hit browse to come to a list. Now this is showing me folks that are already a part of the project. I can go ahead and uh, search through or add folks here. We can select from email addresses, right? Those are folks who may uh, not have a field lens account yet. Whereas people are folks that do have a field lens account. So I can go ahead and say, I want Carrie and Christina to be a part of this post. I can also indicate companies such as my company. Notice my company's already on here. But if I had a subcontractor company or a customer company that I wanted to add, that would allow every user who's a part of that company to view this post. So we're going to go ahead and say done, just adding uh, Carrie and Christina here. Then we can come down to details. And this is a free field. This allows me space to really expand on what this post is about and what is needed. Uh, so I'm going to say, please reply with dimensions for parking lot border wall. Right, I can type as much as I need in there. And then I have the option to assign this to an individual or multiple individuals. So if this post doesn't require any action from anyone, I may not need to assign it to someone. But if I, in this case, I need someone to tell me what the dimensions of that border wall are. So I'm going to go ahead and browse. And in this case, I may want to select my subcontractor company, maybe my masonry subcontractor, uh, or I can select a particular person from my company or from uh, my project team, excuse me. So we'll go ahead and hit done. Now we've added Carrie as an assignee and I can choose to give her an individual due date 
or if I've added multiple people, I can set a due date for all assignees simply by clicking on one of these calendar icons. Notice I also have the ability to remove her right now while I'm still editing and creating the post. Locations are another optional piece of your post. You can indicate where within the work site this post is related to. So in this case, I don't have any locations built for this project, but I can go ahead and build them as I go if I'd like. So I'm going to call this the parking lot, right? And go ahead and uh, check that box. Now I can add sub locations to the parking lot. I can say parking lot border wall, right? And now I can see that border wall is a subset of parking lot. I could go ahead and say the west side of the border wall, um, and then I could say the northwest segment, whatever I may want. You've got up to four levels of sublocations that you can create, and then you'll be able to search those <clears throat> and use them again throughout the project. And when we're finished, we'll go ahead and click done. So now we have a list of folks who can see this post. We have details about what we need. We have individuals assigned to take action a location within the worksite, and then we have the ability to create a post flag here. And what this is, is allowing me to tag the type of post that I'm creating. So no flag simply means a miscellaneous post on this project. But you'll see here I have four other options. I can pick a flag for this post. Is it a safety issue, a deficiency, also known as a punch list item, an RFI, or a submittal request? I'm going to call this an RFI. I'm asking for information, so this would be a request for information from my subcontractor. Now, once I filled in all the fields up top here, you'll also notice that as I choose the post flag, certain pieces may disappear. That's because we don't need the to field when it comes to an RFI. We're going to only assign that to be viewable to people who are responsible for answering it. Uh, whereas something with no flag uh, or a safety item may be visible to everyone. So now that I've gone ahead and chosen all of my details up here, I do have some additional buttons along the bottom. Notice I can continue to assign this post to additional people, just like I could above. I can add categories, which allows me to further label this post. I have the type, the flag as RFI, but I can go ahead and hit categories and that allows me to add categories for this project. So I might say that this post relates to masonry and I could go ahead and create the masonry category for this project. Now it's going to be visible and usable uh, throughout the remainder of the project. And that way we can group all posts related to masonry in the future. We can go ahead and add a location, which we've already done, parking lot and border wall. We can pin this post to a drawing. So if I had a drawing within my project uh, that illustrated the border wall, I could go ahead and select. Now notice I don't have any drawings uploaded to this project yet, uh, but I would be able to search through and click on the drawing that relates to the border wall. And I could then pin this post to a particular spot on that drawing so that folks that I am involving in this RFI can see exactly where uh, the information that I need is located. Now, if you'd like to see how that works in more detail, again, please reference our drawing management video. That's gonna show you how to upload your drawings uh, and how to pin posts to those drawings. The next option we have here is to attach files. If we click to attach files, we can go ahead and drag and drop or copy and paste files, either from our device, from Dropbox, we can use a web search, Google Drive, OneDrive, Google Photos, we can paste a URL link, Instagram, or choose to record a video. So you've got a lot of options for adding media and attachments to your uh, posts here. Simply click outside that box if you change your mind. And then we can add resource tracking here. Resource tracking allows us to choose a date and then we can choose employees uh, or individuals whose resources were used on this post or on this day. So I can go ahead and say that Carrie, as an employee of my company, worked regular, premium, or overtime hours. I can choose the unit code, which would be similar to uh, a cost code or whatever kind of tracking code you may use for your resource tracking. 
Uh, so we can go ahead and indicate here that she was working on electrical or masonry and say that she worked three regular hours. Uh, and we can go ahead and save that whenever we want. Now, notice we can add additional line items right here. And we can go ahead and delete if needed. And we can remove carry entirely. We can track resources for an individual, for a company, right? A particular subcontractor, our company, our customer, or for a discipline. So this would allow us to track resources, for example, for masonry, if we have not uh, assigned the particular subcontractor yet. We could go ahead and pick the type of subcontractor, such as mason, and then indicate uh, the amount of resources utilized. But we are not required to track any resources on our posts if we don't want to. We also have this add weather feature, which is going to pull in weather, current weather forecast for this zip code of our project. But we can go ahead and edit this if we want. You can make changes and then reset back to uh, what we've pulled in for the zip code and the day if you'd like. Again, you're not required to add weather, but if you'd like to indicate the weather uh, at the time of this post, you can. Now, once you've added all the information you need, you have two buttons over here to either save this as a draft, which means you'll be able to come back and continue working on it and editing it later, but no one will be able to see it in the meantime. It's not a completed post. Or we can go ahead and post it. It will be visible and actionable to those who are included in the post, but as an organizer and as the uh, poster of the project, I'll still be able to come back and edit it later if needed. We also have this little checkbox to duplicate. We can choose to save this draft and duplicate it at the same time. Now we have two copies of this post, both as drafts, or we can post it in duplicate. Post it twice, uh, just in case it's maybe a task that needs to be taken care of more than once. So we're just going to go ahead and post it as an individual post. The post has been created, so we'll get a confirmation message. And then we can see it here. Notice it's been given a post number and as an RFI, that RFI has been given a number. Those will count up sequentially. I can see what's going on with that post right here. I can see that carry is assigned. I can see the type of post. And I can see, based on the icon over here on the left-hand side, that that is an open post because it's yellow. See how our open posts over here are labeled in yellow. And I can see that it's an RFI based on the symbol here, this question mark. There's our RFI symbol. Now, if I need to take any action on this post, I do have my more icon over here, those three dots, and I have the ability to export it as a PDF. I can duplicate it, share it, mark it as unread, void the post, or move it to another project. And again, that's going to be related to my permissions uh, as either a project organizer or an administrator for my company. So if you're not seeing certain options there, it may be that you don't have organizer status or administrator status within your company. Now, if I'd like to go ahead and view the post, I can click to open this post. I can see the information that I uh, placed in here earlier, and I can see Carrie and mark her either resolved or closed. Now, Carrie, as an assignee, is going to be able to mark herself resolved when she views this post to say, hey, I've completed the action that I need. And then project organizers or the post creator will be able to come in and mark her as closed, verifying that those actions have been taken. We can also reply to this post, ask questions, uh, add responses, have a commentary back and forth. And as, again, a project organizer or the post creator, I have the ability to update who's assigned, attach additional files, add weather. I can come up here to the edit button and it's going to allow me to edit all sorts of information about this post. And then you've got your more icon with those same options we saw over here on the right hand side. Now, if you'd like to filter down your posts in order to see specifically the type of posts that you need to view at the moment, over here on the left-hand side, you have your focus areas, which are essentially preset filters. I can go ahead and look at posts awaiting my response, posts in a different status, open or resolved or closed. I can see any daily reports, items that are assigned to my company or to me, and then the various 
flags for posts. So we simply have one RFI, but we may be able to say, hey, I'd like to see my punch list items only right now. And then you'll simply see posts with a flag of punch list uh, or deficiency. Remember, we said that term can be interchangeable here within Field Lens. Uh, and then down here, you'll be able to see your drafts or voided posts for this project. And depending on your field lens plan, you may have access to advanced filters right here, which is going to allow you to set up custom saved filters based on all sorts of different pieces of information within your posts. So we can come in here uh, and filter it down. And then notice I have custom filter right here. I can go ahead and save a new custom filter if I do have access to those advanced filters. So this has been a brief overview of your field lens web version. Uh, from here, from today, we've learned how to uh, create or select a project. We've learned how to add people to that project, how to create, edit, view, and filter your posts. And if you'd like more information on how to handle reports or drawings, please see our report management and drawing management videos. Thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you for choosing FieldLens.